Follow along as Liam and Laura explore their past. Secrets are uncovered and hearts are broken in the process. In this novelette, hear Liam's side of the story and how his actions led to the domino effect. This is not a full book. Don't expect one. It is a brief synopsis that leads to the domino effect. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophiles Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile, and we are here to wrap up the Eisenberg effect with Liam's story. Now, like I told y'all in Lake's story, Ledge shows up wanting to meet his father, you know, just kind of like fuck up the family. But I forgot to mention how uh uh what's baby name baby uh lyric when lyric heard that you know her little pregnant self i think she yeah she had the baby at that time because um it was like some time after the fact like uh basely had had their baby yeah mm, i messed all that up um so lyric grabs kj which is canoe jr grabbed their daughter grabbed her husband said we out of here we can't deal with this shit and so um basely was in the nursery you know feeding their baby and uh lake had left left his fucking wife and baby um but you know he had to spin the block and come back and was like damn <laughs> you know like baby come on we gotta go and she's like is everything all right he's like you know nah but we'll talk about that later um and so uh ledge who is it like luca embraces embraces him like you know you're not mad here take my number and you know we'll get this all figured out and we'll meet up later and liam is willing to take the blame for all this because at first they wasn't willing to believe it but then um ledge was like you know my mama name is such and such she died recently found this letter explaining everything and that you're our father you know i just want to meet you i'm not here to cause no problems and he's like you know no laura embraces him with open arms which surprises him and she's like you know i would never turn my back on you or anything like that and they you know everybody looking at him like how are you taking this so well and come to find out this is i don't want to say it's her fault but this is this is laura's doing so i feel like that's the main reason why you kind of could not turn your back on him even if you wanted to is because you caused this situation but um so we go back in time where luca is two years old and uh lake is just a baby yep so it's luca yep mm -hmm. sorry i was just trying to get the storyline together so um Liam, you know, he was running the street at, at that time. Big money, big money. Um, he had the kids with him while he was handling some business. Then he went and dropped them off and met his wife at the hotel because it was his birthday. And usually, uh, Liam is the type of man that, you know, he's a provider. He wears by everybody but himself. So, you know, for his birthday, he wasn't expecting nothing but just to spend some time with his wife. But anyway, he gets to the hotel and it's laura and when he walks into the room more there's another woman standing there and he looking like what the fuck going on here and she's like you know i just wanted to do something special for your birthday um you know i thought you would like this and at first liam says no he like we not doing this shit fuck no but you know she talks him into it like you know i want i want to do this and I know it's not going to jeopardize our relationship. So, you know, if you're thinking that it's a one, <clears throat> it's a one time thing. No, she didn't say that. He said that. Cause after she kind of like pleads her case for this to happen, he looks at her and then he looks at the woman and, you know, of course the woman is gorgeous, but he looks at her and he's like, this is the only time this is happening. Don't ask again. Don't even think about this shit no more. Cause after this this will never fucking happen again. Do you understand me? And I was like, oh, okay, Daddy Lamb. Which I understand because it's like not even being any type of homophobic or anything like that. It's just like 
you bringing somebody else into our bedroom for what? I thought we was good. We don't we don't need nobody else. I don't want to entertain this. But you know, of course, they do, and they have a great time. Which I was like, okay, then, <laughs> you know, it's like mm, no problem for me. I'm like, I okay. But like he said, we ain't gonna talk about it. We ain't gonna mention it. So that shit happened once, and basically, you know, they put it in the back of their minds until. Here comes Ledge, you know, talking about he also has a twin brother. But Law Law ain't trying to hear that shit. He like, I ain't had a daddy all this time. I don't need the motherfucker now. So, you know, you trying to meet up with them and be a whole family and whoop-de-whoop, whatever. Good for you, but keep that shit over there. That ain't got nothing to do with me. And Lake and uh, Lyric, they not answering Liam's phone calls. You know, he been trying to call them and talk to them. But Liam, I mean, not Liam, Lord, he is Liam. Luca is the only one that's still talking, you know, going on about his life. He's like, this won't change nothing for me. Like, what What that mean? It ain't going to stop him from being our brother now. So it's just like, why not embrace him and see what he got going on? And um, Ledge actually owns the bar that, uh, who was it? Was it ever? No, it wasn't ever. Was it Lyric? I don't know. Somebody um, was going to his place and like they saw the potential. Like it wasn't good right then, but it's just like give it a few more months and let people learn about it. And they're like, this could turn into a great business. This is actually Ledges Bar. Um, so I was like, oh, look at us coming full circle. So when they learn out, learn about his bar, oh, is that now? No, that's not. I'm sorry. I'm going into the other, but we're going to get there too. Uh, <laughs> but just keep in mind that that bar from that story ties into this. Um, but uh, what did I say? So Liam is willing to be quiet and not tell their kids, Luca, um, Lyric, and Lake, how Ledge and his brother came to be. He was just going to take the heat and basically be a do-dirt nigga. But he was also in his feelings because his kids wouldn't answer his phone call. So, Miss Laura gets up and goes to cuss out her kids one by one. She first starts with, was it Lyric? Yeah, she started with Lyric first, go to her house and get her together. Because her main concern, she was only concerned about still being like the baby of the family so everybody could still spoil her or whatever. And... So when Laura goes to her house, she gets her together, cuss her on like, and the next time my husband is, uh call your phone, you better pick that motherfucker up. And, you know, like run down the story, like it was actually me, but he was willing to be the man that he has always been and stand up for me and take the hit. But, you know, y'all got me and my husband fucked up. So get yourself together and, you know, basically like grow up and mind your damn business. So then she leaves her and goes to Lake House. And late, straight up tells his mama, like, I ain't got time for this right now. She slaps him. And you can tell, Lake, mm, I still love him, but I still ain't here for him and Baisley. That's not going to change. But he was like, that's where we are now. You putting your hands on me. And once again, you know, it's the same thing. It's just like, you got an attitude and worried about these new siblings when it really ain't none of your business at the end of the day. And like I said, basically tell the same thing. Like, don't play with my fucking husband. He at home now sad because his kids are upset with him when they really don't have a reason to be. And, you know, she leaves um, from them and goes to talk to Luca. And, you know, Luca was already waiting on her um, because he was on the phone. And she was like, who you on the phone with? And it was one of them. I forgot. It really didn't matter. Um and he's like you know you need to get home it's late at night anyway she's like yeah let me get back to my husband so but when she gets home uh, <laughs> Liam is laying in the bed with Lake and Luca I mean uh <laughs> Lake and Luca um Lake and Lyric you know they done came back to their daddy and they made up um and so they laying together and so you know she goes to get in the shower because she done been outside before she get back in the bed and um who was that? Lyric told her she's sleeping on the couch tonight. And Lake like, mm-hmm, show Liz, you in trouble. And Liam told them, 
I'll kick y'all out before I kick my wife out. You know, y'all can get the fuck on with that. And so that's just the sweet end of it. And while I enjoy it, because like I said, I love Gray Huffington's, Huffington's writing, excuse me, her and be love, like those guaranteed happily ever after stories, I live for it. I love it so much. So, but with me saying that, I will also say this was not needed. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It just felt like some shit that got thrown in at the end because everybody's story was wrapping up like Luca and Ever. We got that happy, happily ever after with their, what, five children? Emery, Essence, L, Lucas. Am I forgetting somebody? No, with their four children. Um, and then, like I said, Lyric and uh, Ken got baby KJ. And then here go Lake with Baisley and their baby. Oh, I forgot that baby's name. And that baby. Uh, so, you know, everything was just wrapping up. Then it's just like, boom, here go two more people. So we leading into another, uh, what is it, series. Why was that word escaping me? So, yeah, but, whew. Speaking of, going into the domino effect, part one, being ledge, and then part two. It ain't came out yet, but I'm telling you, and I feel like it already is, and I'm going to be pissed about it. Because um, even though I haven't talked about it yet, in Ledge's story, we get a look into Law and what he's going through. And with the woman that he's been dealing with, I pray that that woman is not who he's going to be with. Like, I feel like it's going to be a uh, lake and basically all over again, just a different one. And that is going to piss me off. But I'm not the author. And I'm also still going to read it and still support. But I'm just trying to get my frustrations out of the way. Anyway, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you back in the next episode to talk about Mr. Ledge and get into that story with my baby Halo. Peace and blessings, my beautiful people.